The investment firm Janus and Henderson just released a new study that shows that REITs are currently priced at an estimated 28% discount to the net asset value. What this essentially means is that you get to buy an equity stake in the real estate of REITs at roughly 72 cents on the dollar. And that's just the average of the sector. There are actually quite a few REITs that trade at a lot lower valuations than that with 30, 40 or even 50% discounts to the net asset values. Now obviously there are some REITs that these deserve to trade at such low valuations. So just think about REITs that own office buildings or have too much debt or management teams that are conflicted. There are quite a few of such examples. I've highlighted some of them on my channel earlier. But then there are also some other REITs that are doing really well today. They own attractive assets, they have strong balance sheets, good management teams. But despite that, they've dropped along with the rest of the REIT market. And as a result, they are today severely discounted. That's what I'm buying at the moment. In case you're not familiar with me, my name is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I want to highlight two specific REITs to you that I think are heavily discounted relative to the value of their real estate. But before I get into it, if you could please like this video, consider also subscribing to the channel. That will really help me a lot and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So the first company that I want to discuss here is called Tricon Residential. This actually isn't a REIT officially, but it functions essentially as one. It specializes in single family rental properties, just like its two peers, American Homes for Rent and Invitation Homes. All of these companies performed really well in 2020 and 2021 when home prices were surging, but then last year their share prices collapsed when interest rates started surging, investors became fearful, and the transaction activity slowed down. We think that there are some good reasons to be fearful. Housing affordability is some of the worst it has ever been and everybody seems to be expecting a housing crash today. But as I'm sure you've heard before, the best time to invest is when everybody's fearful and this fear is already reflected today in the valuations of these single family companies that are publicly listed. Tricon as an example is today priced at a 40% discount to its net asset value and we actually think that this net asset value is quite conservatively estimated because they have routinely been able to sell properties at a 10 to 15 percent premium to it. Now I'm not saying that its net asset value won't drop at all in the coming quarters but I think that it's going to be a lot more resilient than what the market is today pricing and here are three reasons for it. For one about 90 percent of its properties are located in a rapidly growing sunbelt market. Then for two its average rent level is only 1700. These are affordable homes. I think that we're gonna see the values of the premium segment come down a bit but the affordable segment is a lot more resilient. And then the third reason its rents are estimated to be roughly 20% below market and so this provides an opportunity for Tricon to bump up its rents quite significantly which should also be reflected in a higher net asset value over time. Now like I said its net asset value may still decline a bit but you're getting such huge margin of safety with a 40% discount today and the rents are growing at a good pace and for this reason I think the company is undervalued and very attractive. I think that the same is true for its peers, Invitation Home and American Homes for Rent. I think all three companies are attractive here but I slightly prefer Tricon because of one specific reason. Tricon is not just a landlord, it also has an asset management business which allows it to earn fee income by managing the capital of other investors. I think that this is a competitive advantage in today's environment because the share prices of all these REITs are too heavily discounted to issue more equity and buy more properties. This would be very diluted so they simply cannot do it but Tricon can keep on growing by managing this capital for the other investors and earn fee income in the process. Still shortly before the surge in interest rates Tricon was actually guiding to grow its FFO per share which is the equivalent of its cash flow per share by roughly 15% per year over the next three years. That's because it has a lot of demand for its asset management services. Now it obviously had to then scale back on this guidance because it wouldn't be prudent to buy so many properties in today's uncertain world but it just shows you that this company has very attractive growth prospects and despite that it's today heavily discounted and this is why it's our top pick in the single family rental sector. Eventually as market conditions stabilize and the share price of the company returns closer to its net asset value I think that we're going to see roughly 50% upside from here while you wait the company is creating value by growing its asset management business and you also earn a small 3% dividend yield. Then the second company that I want to discuss here is called Whitestone REIT ticker symbol WSR. This is a REIT that specializes in 
service-oriented strip centers and today priced also at a roughly 40% discount to its net asset value. We think that the company is pricing it at such a low valuation because this is a REIT that invests in retail properties. Retail is today out of favor because everybody fears that we're going into a recession. But I think that the market is overreacting, undervaluing the company because it's missing a few important points. First of all, the properties of Whitestone are a lot more resilient to recessions than the market appears to understand. These are service-oriented properties with things like growth, grocery stores, barbershops, fitness centers. These are things that people still use during recessions. Leases have at least a few years on them and so the cash flow doesn't change materially whether the economy is booming or whether we go into a recession. Then secondly, this property is also a lot more resilient to e-commerce than the market understands. And again, this comes back to what we said earlier about these properties being service oriented. Today, there still aren't any online grocers that are able to operate profitably. And so this explains why even Amazon is today investing in these properties with its it's Whole Foods business, it's Amazon Go business. And so once again, these properties are quite resilient to e-commerce because they provide services with a better convenience than what you can get online. Finally, perhaps the most important thing, these properties are located in rapidly growing Sunbelt markets. Some of the biggest market exposures of Whitestone are Phoenix and Austin. These are cities that are growing rapidly. A lot of people are moving there. Not enough new retail space have been built in recent years, in large part because the sentiment for retail is so low today. And as a result, rents are growing rapidly. Whitestone actually had the fastest same property NOI growth in its period group last year at around 8%. This was largely because it was able to bump up the rents of its expiring leases very significantly by above 15%. And so based on this strong performance of its properties, I just don't understand why the market is discounting the company so heavily. Yes, Whitestone has a few other issues that are worth mentioning, has a bit more leverage than average, it has had past management issues, but I've talked quite a few times to the management, to the new CEO of the rate, and all these issues are well under control they are now deleveraging the balance sheet. The new management is very friendly to the shareholders, in my opinion. And so once again, I don't think that pricing the company at a 40% discount makes sense. Perhaps you'll, you'll discount it by 10, 20%, but 40 seems way excessive, in my opinion. I think that as the REIT keeps growing at this solid pace, all while deleveraging its balance sheet, eventually the market is going to give more credit to the REIT, it's going to reprice it closer to the peers, and this could lead to significant upside potential. While you wait, you're in a roughly 10 10% cash flow yield out of which about half is paid in dividends and the rest is retained by the REIT to pay off debt. So once again, these are two listed real estate companies that I'm buying today, Tricon Residential, Whitestone REIT. Both of them are priced at roughly 40% discounts to the net asset values, despite being able to grow their cash flow and earning very desirable assets. I think that if you were offered to buy an equity stake in a private real estate fund at a 40% discount, you'll probably jump on the opportunity. But somehow, because these are publicly listed companies, individual investors somehow seem reluctant to owning these because of the volatility of the public market. But if you can think long term, these are very attractive opportunities and historically buying REITs when they've been so heavily discounted has resulted in very attractive total returns. This was also shown in the recent study by Janus Henderson. I'll put a chart somewhere on the screen that shows this to you. In short, the larger the discount to net asset value, the larger the returns have been in the following years historically in the REIT sector. And for this reason, I think that now is a great time to buy in REITs. If you want to access my full REIT portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And again, if you could please like this video, it will help me a lot. Thank you very much and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.